Hello everyone, welcome to Lara Tips. In today's video, we'll be looking at seven new things that are added to Laravel version 9.31.0. So let's get started. The first thing that has been added is this request lifecycle duration handler. If you look here, we can check how long a request took and based on that interval, we can log things. Suppose let's say a request took more than one seconds or let's say 10 milliseconds, then we can log the URL, the user, the duration, everything. So let me show you that. For that, let me go here in the app service provider, which is inside app providers folder. And now here I am checking if the app is not in console. If we are checking for the request lifecycle, then it will not happen in the request whenever we are refreshing the browser. So in that case, we'll write here if it is not running in console, then we'll do this. So here this kernel and if I just show you that, this is the kernel, this illuminate contract HTTP kernel. And then this method and you can check this out, this carbon interval and we are looking at 10 milliseconds. If 10 millisecond is crossed then we will actually log these things log notice and request exceeded duration threshold and all these things i am showing you this microsecond and this millisecond so let me go here laravel.log and there is nothing over here now let me go over here in laratips.test and refresh the page then it took about 114 millisecond now if i come here then it will show this log because it exceeded 10 millisecond threshold and you can see here the request exceeded the duration threshold and the user is null since i am not logged in if the user is logged in then it will show all the user fields and then we can see the url this url and this url matches and then the actual duration in microsecond and in millisecond whichever you want you can just write it over here either you can just log your data over here or you can send a push notification using discord slack whatever you want or send an email now before moving to the next thing i would like you to introduce to this video sponsor which is honey Badger. it is obvious that we run into some errors everyone's code will have some errors even if the code is written by amazing developers like my viewers in such case honey Badger can be your best friend honey Badger allows you to monitor those errors uptime check-ins and deployments in real time with easy to use interface with that you'll be able to know what happened immediately when your customers encounter those errors whenever they are using your application or website then you'll be notified via email sms slack and many more immediately you can easily install honey Badger in minutes and when something goes wrong in your application you can go to your dashboard and see full detail of the errors which will help you to solve the issue much more faster and thanks to honey Badger for sponsoring this video honey Badger has both free and paid version and you can check the link in the description and be a devops hero in minutes by using honey Badger. Now let's move to the second thing which is added and that is this command lifecycle handler. Before we had request lifecycle handler and now it is command lifecycle handler. It is similar to that of the request lifecycle handler. Instead, we are handling the command. You can see here it looks same but we have this console kernel and if you look here it is actually the kernel but inside this console namespace. So we are doing the same thing over here. We'll get started at input and status and let me log these over here and i have already created a test command and here i am sleeping for one second you can see here and i have just taken here 10 milliseconds so if i run here psp artisan test command and just hit enter then it will take one second and if i come here in the laravel.log then i'll get the duration and then input here we'll get the command name and the status whatever that is being returned from here the third thing that has been added is this model without timestamp so here let me show you that here we will find a first user and then we'll update the user and then just return the user okay so here i am updating the name of the user i am passing here random names so that it will generate random name whenever i execute it so let me run it so you can see here this updated at timestamp it is 175312 and if i again execute it then you can see here 5321 
5323 which means that updated as field is being changed whenever we change something on a user model but let's say there comes some scenario where you don't want to change the updated at column of the model then there is this new thing added this user without timestamp you can just write it like this and inside this without timestamp you need to pass a closure inside a closure you will pass whatever you were doing before so i am just doing like this and you can see here this is 5323 and this name over here the name will change but this updated at will not change just watch it carefully so i'm executing it sorry guys i have to unselect that and just run it again and you can see here 5323 5323 and the name is changing if i just run it one more time then the name changed and it didn't now let us move to the fourth thing which is str wrap if you want to wrap some string with other things then you can use that so here let's say we have this hello and I am changing it to uppercase and I want to wrap this hello with this uppercase hello with this hash on both sides on the left as well as on the right and I am converting it into a string. So if I run it then you can see here hash is added on the left and right. So but let's say you don't want to add hash on the right hand side. Let's say we want to add this then on the left I'll have hash and on the right this. But let's say you want to wrap this thing with a tag like this. You can do it like this. So like this and div and run it. You can have so many operations over here. Let's say you have so many tags and you have done so many things like this here. And in the end, you want to wrap that string with a div tag or whatever tag you want. Then you can do it like this. Now let us move to the fifth thing which is added is this improved blade compilation execution masses. Here I have this laratips.old test. This is the previous Laravel version and if I open that you can see here if I just do it like this for each and suppose let's say for some reason I forgot to pass anything over here and just run it then you will see we will see this error okay undefined array key and you will be just shocked what is this error it should say that for is improperly being used or something like that but it shows us the error undefined array key but let me go over here so let's say here in the welcome.blade.php in the latest Laravel version and let me just do it like this okay and here let me refresh the page and now we'll see this malformed for each statement which means that it is now showing us the correct error message it will be very useful for us to debug now let us look at the sixth thing and these remaining two are very simple things so i'll just show you this now the wheat is macroable just like any other facade so here suppose let's say you want to access the image from the wheat then you can just make a macro like this and add it on an app service provider and then you can access this image method on here by default this image method is not present on wheat class but after you do this it will be available and you don't have to write resources images each and every time whenever you try to access the image now the seven and the last thing that has been added is this prompt to create mysql db when migrating previously this was added to the sqlite and now it is added to mysql suppose let's say whenever you run this php artisan migrate it would just throw an error that database is not present on the given connection or in the mysql connection but now it will actually ask you whether you want to create the migration and if you type yes then it will actually create that database which you have mentioned in the .env file 